the fact that they couldn't have children that made them end up in a prison in Egypt. After reading a letter from Merhat, she vowed to never marry again. When they split up, she was just starting her golf career. Okay, she resumed communicating with him despite having sworn off dating. It's beyond her comfort zone. She may be talking to the Craigslist killer. She stopped talking about every ex-boyfriend lately. The two keep chatting through AOL, I am. He pleads for a lifetime commitment. Whoa, she approves. Women aren't smart, they say. Hello everyone, welcome to your favorite channel. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. Leaving towards Egypt, great choice. She struggles in Egypt. Egyptians are plentiful. She's overjoyed to see him. His elbow patches are cool. Elbow patches are great gifts. Everyone celebrates when they marry. Susan wants a family. She's aware of the medical miracle of conceiving a child beyond 50, which makes her sad. Seeing a woman carrying a child on the bus prompted her to adopt. They skip the bus to talk about adoption in church. Birth takes minutes, 15 minutes. Priests or authorities tell them to be discreet. Susan was indifferent. Adopters seldom mention that. A month later, they find an adoptable child. The couple visits the terrifying nun and is given a baby without documents. Susan fell instantly in love, but she feared losing her paperwork. We may infer she's not frightened because she keeps doing it. Susan's recklessness deserves a foreign jail sentence. I'd create locked up, stupid, overcrowded prisons prevent me from executing anybody. They eventually took the baby home, but there are legal issues. They find a helpful nun in a closed orphanage. Many people came, Susan, you're stupid. The nun tells them to go to the birth office and get the proper documents because she knows a doctor who will pronounce them as the parents. Susan is terrified but pretends not to be since she adores the child. Susan! Susan says this is her last trick before catching Marco. I agree, Susan. Madhat and Marco explored Cairo's slums. Maybe you'll forget. Not yet. Susan's sister emails the family with the cancer diagnosis. She wants to bring Marco to the US to meet his grandmother. They must travel to the embassy for Marco's visa. Visas aren't issued without a valid US passport. Susan must sign a document to prove that she's Marco's mother. She is concerned about getting a passport, but she does. False. The embassy calls the next morning, demanding documentation of her delivery. Egypt needs this. Recline, Sister Teresa's skepticism is sought. In her stronghold, she helps. They take the amended letter to the embassy and are asked for pregnancy evidence. Fearful, she flees. Photoshop isn't a joke. I can edit pregnant photos. When Susan tries to rescind her application, a beard-sporting embassy official summons her. They suspect a youngster may not be connected. She's wanted for kidnapping. They release them, told them to see a lawyer, and took their DNA. You probably believe the baby was a mistake at this point. Susan goes alone to visit her cancer-stricken mother. Sue visits Egypt. The doorbell rings as they finish decorating. Sirens and cops are heard. Dun dun dun. After arrest, police transport them to cells. She's with Marco. Prison-born babies thrive. Unknown kidnappers take Madhat. Detectives smoke and speak quietly. That's not your baby because you can't suck. An officer says, what? She faces 7 to 15 years in prison. Then I murder myself with a knife. Foreign prisons are fast and gloomy. Marco visits her in jail. In Egypt, kidnapping a baby is illegal, but not imprisoning one. The baby is stolen, probably resale. After many days, cops pour water on inmates. I abused detainees for amusement as a guard. Outdated. Susan is Medhat's courtroom companion. It's caged the US courts should do this. Teresa's arrest, Susan doesn't know what's in the cage or why. The group's lawyer came and charged them with human trafficking. One baby, irrelevant. The nine-month experiment lasted nine months, they've decided. Two years in prison for fabricating paperwork. Susan is astonished and outraged despite forging 100 papers. Susan has been thrown in prison with the murderers. She prays for Marco and washes his clothing. After 2004 days, they were released. She's glad they're back. Marco must return first. Dunce, the next morning, they contact a lawyer regarding Marco. Susan needed to speak with him despite learning the government had changed his identity and ideas. Visit an orphanage. What's her deal? This is it, everyone. Let us know in the comments what you got as a lesson from this story. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done that. Also, put on the notifications because the next video is going to be a great one.